um, we're going to move on to Alan Snyder. And Alan, I'm, I am running a poll right now about the art lending market. Uh, can you, while we're doing that, you know, again, number one, how's the weather in Los Angeles? Because it's freezing in Las Vegas. Weather is <laughs> good, about 70. Eat your heart out. I, I, I am. <laughs> and uh, how's the tennis? <clears throat> good. Always room for improvement so I can catch up with you. Do you need to wear a mask when you play? No. Oh, very no good. I, I appreciate that then. Excellent. So far. Uh, so far. So, 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 so tell me about, um, you know, what you, what, what's going on, Shinnecock? Um, introduce yourself, introduce Shinnecock and its many variations and this art <laughs> lending fund that has, has been doing so well. Um, and then after you finish your introduction, I will stop this poll that is running, which will give you some insight into what people are, are trying to understand about the art lending market. So, all right. Good afternoon, everybody. Hey, Marty, thanks so much for setting this up for all of us. Uh, I'm the founder of a 30 year old family office investment boutique. Uh, I won't bore everybody with my checkered pass. You can find it at Shinnecock. Oh, it's an Indian name. Uh, S H I N N E C O C K dot com. Uh, I think for the crowd that's uh, still with us, you'll find some interesting articles there as well. For all the investors on the call, our investment challenge today, I think, is killer. Uh, you look at the markets, and I'll get into them very briefly after the panel in the opening uh, day. For me, I so you can calibrate my remarks, I think losing money sucks because uh, a lot of it's mine. And uh, then second or third, is earning a little is not so very nifty either. All right. Most of us know that a 60-40 portfolio is pretty compelling. 60% equities or more aggressive investments and 40% more conservative fixed income investments. But let's explore the challenges in each one of those areas for a second. John Adams <laughs> said, Facts are stubborn things. Let me set the stage. The 10-year Dow Jones is one standard deviation from one of the past panelists, a statistician, higher than the last 110 years. Gulp. The Fed is buying about $120 billion of securities every month. Their balance sheet is doubled to $7 trillion this year. Uh, look out below. Most economists, here's an interesting thing. Uh, Carmen uh, Reinhardt, the chief economist of the World Bank says, uh, wait a minute, does this make sense? Capital, personal capital income, per capita income hasn't increased, in fact, It'll take years for it to recover to pre-COVID levels. So what are we buying? We're buying a cash stream of earnings, which are less, even with a robust recovery, will be less unless things really smoke in the fourth quarter of this year than they were pre-COVID, pre-pandemic. And yet we're paying a hell of a lot more. P ratios, 23 times versus an average over the last 20 years of 15. The Schiller CAPE PE ratio is 33% higher than its 20 year average. It projects a 1% return on equities going forward. Uh, a little daunting for that risk bucket. Not to say the market can't go higher, but what do you put in that risk bucket? Maybe it's some venture investing. Fixed income. The 40% of the bucket is your anchor to windward to smooth over some of the volatility in that more aggressive bucket. The 10-year treasury has declined since the 80s from 16% to 1%, slightly less than 1% bouncing around. Where is the upside? 
In March of last year, the Fed established a lower bound on their hurdle of somewhere between 1.25% and zero. Current inflation is higher than the 10-year treasury. Talk about slow value destruction. So what do you put in that 40% anchor to windward bucket? Really challenging. All right, a lot of smart money is out there. Wilshire Consulting projects the next 10 years for equities at 5.5% for intermediate duration bonds, one and three quarters with a lot of volatility. CalPERS was mentioned in the prior panel, has a 7% return target. Uh, oops, their 10-year average is 4.32%. Uh, so they're not close to their target. All right, what about, what do you do? I submit, and here's one of my many prejudices, Yale, whose performance on their endowment has been stellar, has 80% of its funds in alternatives and real asset classes. Harvard, no slouch, has 60% in hedge funds and other real assets. So clearly that gets my vote. In my uh, earlier uh, stumbling around, I ran a $20 billion insurance company portfolio. Diversification is key. And uh, I think the, one of the best performing sectors was the $2 billion we had in alternatives. All right. That led me to look at fine art secured lending. What in God's green is, earth is that? Here's the typical trade. We lend money against a hard asset. Museum quality fine art, let's say it's somewhere between $250,000 in value and 15 to $20 million. We lend money generally for one year. The borrower pays upfront the interest costs, prepays it for the term of the loan. The borrower pays the storage costs. Why? Because we take delivery of the hard asset collateral. Yippee, we control it. And the borrower also pays all insurance costs. Who does this? At one level, you got to take a smile about yourself. We are lending and providing inventory finance to major gallerist dealers, secondarily to collectors. Collectors that may, in one guy's case with us, was going to buy another company. Another guy had to pay a, a tax bill. A third fellow said, look, I've got this enormous appreciation in my art. I don't want to sell it and pay a capital gains tax because he was old. He said, so let me take out a loan against it. The market size. It's about a this may surprise some of you on the call, is a $64 billion a year in transactions market. Fine art secured lending today is about a $20 billion market growing at 15% a year. Warming my black heart as the largest investor in what we do is that the market for these loans is capital short. I love that. I don't want to invest or be very careful of investing in places that have excess capital. One of the other things we do at Shinnecock is specialty lending. Boy, the credit funds are awash in capital. Covenants are going out the window. Don't have that problem in art. All right, let's get down into the weeds. We have two vehicles. One is a fund. And I'll get into that. The other is doing co-investments or sidecars because our fund is very conservative and has a limit of no more than 15% to any single borrower or any single artist. Today, we have 22 loans, about 140 pieces of different artworks. The fund has been around, you know, we've been investing in art without a default, I might note, <laughs> happily, Alan says, 
for the last approximately four years. Just means someday we'll have a default, but we haven't today. The fund gets about a net to the investor 7% yield. The sidecars, for various reasons, too lengthy to go into today, have yields ranging from 9 to 12%, with some of them having a profit participation in the sale of the art built in. I don't know about you all. I think it's very hard to find that kind of yield against a hard asset, particularly where the lender has control of the hard asset in case something goes kaflooey. I am a worry ward, as you probably can tell. This is short duration stuff. The fund has an average duration of four and a half months. The sidecars have a duration of, of one year. Uh, flexibility in case rates go up. Think of intermediate or longer duration bonds. I think there will be blood in the streets if rates go up much. In fact, this year already, you would have lost money in the 10-year treasury. Principal protection, near and dear to me. We're lending at 50% loan to value or less. The fund has a, an average LTV of approximately 37.5%. I love that. And in addition, since we possess the art, we also get a corporate or personal guarantee on the loan. Belt and suspenders, if you will. Now the collateral, let's talk about collateral. You know, sophisticated audience. We all know about secured finance and autos. Well, wait a minute. Autos have the depreciation of a falling rock. Art over the last 20 years is appreciated at a compound five and a half percent rate. Again, another buffer protection against being wrong. Art, unlike let's say equipment leasing, is a global asset like gold. It moves around the world with currency fluctuations. Another thing that's pretty neat, low correlation to pretty much every other type of asset class. For equities, it's about 0.15, with, which my uh, statistician friends tell me is meaningless. So we have a first priority interest. We possess it. And the collateral against you know, natural disasters is insured. Pretty nifty. So you got widespread diversification. Here's a shocker. How often? do we see, since I invest in other people's products as well, where the liquidity provisions for the investor match the underlying portfolio? Because I don't want hot money. We offer a one-year hard lock and then 90-day notice and 100% liquidity if somebody wants it, which you can meet given the duration of the portfolio. Another thing. Being old and cranky, just ask my wife. I get the luxury of tilting at windmills. When we put this fund together, we spent a year in looking at other credit funds, which I dealt when I was running the insurance company, and said, let's create a superior structure. This fund, for an offshore investor, has no ECI, no effectively connected income, no need for all of the dead weight of offshore feeders, which cost about 200 basis points. For tax qualified investors, there is no UBTI. Wow. And for US taxable investors, because we use the structure that we do, there's a corporate master. Unlike pretty much most other funds, the investment expenses are 100% tax deductible pre-tax expense, that saves an investor about 100 basis points. Love that. Collateral. Versus most other lending, the thing about the collateral is 
All the work on this is up front. I compare it to our specialty lending activities. There, you do diligence, find a deal, diligence it, make the loan, and then keep track of it to make sure that the borrower is adhering to the covenants and the borrowing base, et cetera, et cetera. Here, all the work is to establish authenticity, provenance, valuation, et cetera. We do an enormous amount of work. I can get into it if anybody's curious. In addition, even though we're lending against this hard asset, belt and suspenders again. We also do an assessment of the borrower, even though we control the capital. Why? We want to avoid bad actors. In my uh, youth, I, with a couple of other people, built the Discover card, got into all the credit analytics there. So what do we do? We, we do pull about six to eight Experian reports, web searches, LexisNexis on the borrower. We want to avoid problem or bad actors. So we do that. Then we're anal. <laughs> I guess it was a compliment I got from somebody that invested with us. I said, Snyder, I've looked at other stuff in the art space. Your detailed analytics is more than I've ever seen in the space. All right, probably guilty as charged. Uh, I believe in all the stuff I've done, you can almost never do too much due diligence. All right, so you got a big market, it's growing, it's basically capital short, and I gave you some of the details. Let's talk downside. Marty knows years ago, I used to do a lot in managed futures. The classic thing is you look at downside drawdowns, art. Sotheby's owns a company called May Moses, which has an index going back 50 years of high-end museum quality fine art. What's been the largest drawdown? I wish we were uh, all together because I'd ask the audience. I was surprised, it was 1990. High-end art went down 25%. In 08, 09, the big crunch, equities went down, I don't know, about 53% in the S&P, NASDAQ 72, high-end art went down 22.5%. That gave me some comfort against the LTV ratios we use. My guys, my young guys said, okay, Snyder, get off our back. <laughs> You're too heavy. That solves it. I said, no, no, no. What has been the average price volatility in art over any two-year window in time in case, God forbid, there's a default? We looked at it, the average price volatility is 8%. That gave us some comfort. In extreme situations, it's been as high as 15. So that was pretty comforting on downside issues. Correlation, as I talked about, was neg negligible. And um, I talked about the tax efficiency. Let me dig a little deeper how much time do we have, Marty, before I, you get the plug for me? The hook. Yes, give me one second here. I think you've got 10 minutes before the hook. And if you oh, could address the questions that the audience asked or wants to know, which is the size of the marketplace and differentiating factors between you and other well-known credit products, that'd be great. Okay. The market's running about $64 billion in transactions a year. Uh, the loan, outstanding loans are about 20 billion growing at 15% a year. Um, and are there big players in the space? Yeah, there's some. The one category, there's three categories of lend of borrowers. One, gallerist dealers. We have a pretty good presence there. We've done about $40 million worth of loans. Two individual collectors. Three, ultra high net worths that have their accounts at a private bank. Now, private banks, I hate to be such a cynic, but we know generally charge a lot for their services. So if you are a privileged 
ultra wealthy person and have your account at, let's say, I don't know, city private. They will give you an accommodation loan because they're making so much money from the account at a rate, let's call it 6% that we would find unattractive. So we're not competitive in that marketplace. What can we do that others can't? Well, I think one borrower, one borrower during COVID in March came to me and said, hey, Alan, I want to buy scoop up art because I think you, he's an expert in old masters. Uh, he said, there's this Zerberon and a Karachi that I can buy very cheaply because the seller is in distress. I need additional financing. He said, good, that's our job to be flexible and responsive to borrowers. I said, however, all of the other terms about us taking possession, et cetera, et cetera, are in place. And in his case, he said, look, we want to participate with you and your upside. So the investors in that sidecar deal, which interest enough included our fund, get an additional seven and a half percent profit participation. And I'm happy to report he had purchased a Greco painting for $400,000. And in that uh, collateral pool, it was in one of the collateral pools. Uh, it was sold at auction for approximately $800,000. So not only did the loan get paid down by that, but our investors got the first kiss of a profit participation on the sale of that piece of art. Um, what else on that? Um, one thing that's important, the due diligence. As I said, really important. If a piece of art, we look at the provenance, has it been displayed at major museums? I'll give you a fun war story for any art people on the call. There, uh, one of Barar owned a Greco statue. There are four in the world. Fine, <laughs> not a deep market. And Greco used those statues as models for some of his famous paintings. We used one of three major appraisal companies, Gerd Johns, Paul Mall, or Winston, unless it's a specialty genre. In this case, the art was in Europe, we shipped to London and we used Harry Smith, who owns Ger Johns, and he appraised it. He said, after doing the appraisal, we had a long chat with him. He said, Alan, I got a problem. He said, my guys would say it's worth somewhere between four and a half million and 16 million. We think over time, it'll probably go for 16 million, but we're going to give you the appraisal at four and a half. So we only lent 30% loan to value against that Greco. In addition, for due diligence, the Greco had been accepted into a major exhibition of Greco stuff at the Chicago Fine Art Museum. So we called the curator. Woman was lovely. <laughs> Talk your ear off, <laughs> however. We spent an hour on the phone with her as she was saying all of the research she'd done in the provenance and authenticity of this piece and was thrilled to have it in her exhibition. Great data point. In addition, we look at the FBI stolen database. We look at art price. We subscribe to it. It's the largest database of art pricing in the world. Uh, we look at that for comps. So we get either a, an appraisal price, just like you would on real estate, or even better, if it's been through a recent auction, I would say for price discovery, uh, we just did a deal on a uh, George O'Keefe, beautiful painting on Jonquils that had been through a recent Christie's auction. Great open outcry between buyers and sellers. I would argue that's about as good a price test as you can get. Uh, so we do that. In addition, on of putting everybody to sleep. We found some surprising stuff that some of the other borrowers are a little more casual than we are. 
Let me give you an example. A hedge fund wanted to roll over an art loan to us and said, hey, Alan, this, it's a great piece of art. Here's the borrower. We, we want out, We're gonna, we need the money for something else. What do you think? We filed, we looked at the Uniform Commercial Code and the UCC ones, which is a filing to establish your seniority against a piece of hard asset collateral like you would with a mortgage. I went back to the, my friend and said, uh, you got a problem. You told me there's a single borrower, single owner. There are actually two. If that loan defaults, you're in a world of hurt. So we didn't do that loan. They spent a year trying to clean it up with some uh, real hassles associated with it. So we do that. We take delivery of the art. It's inspected uh, uh, during the onboarding process, make sure it's as represented and as evaluated. Then we file a, and we file a UCC one against it to establish our privity to the collateral. Ooh, a lot of work. But once you've done it, here's the beauty. That's it. You've got it under your control. I love it. And I compare that to most other lending activities and think notwithstanding the hard work up front, it's more secure and you're earning, you know, look at it this way, Marty, high yield bonds, right? The index is giving you about a yield of 5% here. You've got a hard asset backing, you're getting in the fund 7%. We expect it'll climb gradually to 8% in the next year. Or you can do a sidecar, which is less diversified because it's a single borrower and usually a single genre of art. Multiple pieces of collateral, good, but not as diversified as the fund, even though the yield is higher. Um, any other questions? Complaints, suggestions. There's been a couple of questions from the audience. Um, let me see, uh, talking about provenance and uh, are there specialized specific teams that you rely on for loan workouts or do you uh, in house? Yes. When we were doing that year of painful work, three law firms, a ridiculous amount of money to come up with this compelling legal structure I went around, I'd like to believe, given uh, my past, somebody would say, okay, Snyder, you're not a totally half-assed investor, Wall Street experienced guy, but you ain't no art expert. All right, it's now five years later, maybe a little expertise, but certainly not a lot. We went out and found an art advisory board of super art experts, for example. We have a guy that's a tough, tough, kick-ass art lawyer as one. A woman, really talented woman, went through all the Christie's, uh, getting her master's, had an undergraduate degree, worked at Christie's for a while. Now she's at the largest art logistics company uh, and has been helpful for us because we're happy to send the art to a museum for display because it enhances the value. She's been really helpful. A, a nifty woman who's an art advisor to major collectors in New York. Um, another guy uh, was CEO of one of the largest museums in Washington, had been the, in charge of several art museums prior to that. He thinks another marketplace that's going to develop is major museums. Uh, we haven't done any, well, we just did actually a, a loan to a museum in Milan. And uh, again, given our work, view of the world, we said fine, but as long as the loan is outstanding, you've got to ship the art with a valid export certificate, very important item, uh, a permanent uh, export certificate. You've got to ship it into the United States where we can control the asset in case they don't pay back the loan. Um, so I don't know what everybody on the, that may be listening. I look at this and I guess 
I'm close to a bigot about it. For a yield investment with a consistency of return, I don't know things that are much better. Yeah, we dabble in CLOs and specialty finance, but uh, considerably more challenging, I would argue. And uh, all I know is if you're in a 7% return or better, you will outperform every institutional money manager out there. Year after year, for sure. Sounds great. Listen, very much appreciate your uh, program and what you guys are doing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to get sustained investment returns. And I think you've got a great niche that can be exploited a great deal. So, so.